another enclosure build day some of the enclosures we've built you guys have seen all the videos some are holding up really really well some are using the hides as the way that they were originally designed some not all right next up we're going to go get this beautiful chromatopelma cyanopubescence, my beautiful female green bottle blue. Now, as I mentioned before, there's absolutely nothing wrong with her enclosure other than the fact that I really want to bring the substrate up. I want to be able to see whatever I want to see, and I want to see it above this line here on the bottom. Everything's pushed down. She doesn't use the skull. It's not an overly uh, territorial or defensive species. It's not a highly venomous species, so I think we're going to do without the skull this time. And I have some different ideas. I think it's time that we give this incredible girl a beautiful new enclosure. So let's get to it. So for those that saw the other video, and I'll put the link to it in the corner, I just rehoused uh, an OBT, Terracinus murius, uh, and the, the beautiful orange baboon tarantula. And I, I basically... Uh, set her up in one of these enclosures that is identical to this. Why do I have two of them? I actually did two backgrounds exactly the same time. You guys didn't know, but I did two at the same time because it literally only took a few minutes. So this one's all ready to go as well for the other desert species. And as I've mentioned before, that enclosure that houses that uh, beautiful uh, green ball of blue has a desert style background already installed. So we'll use that for the next one. But we're going to set this one up for her now. I've already gone and uh, found uh, some different types of cork and stuff. I got all sorts of cork. And I got these unique things that I found in my in my tickle trunk. All right, I guess I need to explain <laughs> a tickle trunk. I've had people ask in the comments, Biggs, what's a tickle trunk? Well, when I was a little kid, there was a childhood show called Mr. Dress Up. It's a Canadian show. And uh, he had a tickle trunk. And what the tickle trunk was is anything he was doing that day magically would appear in this trunk. And for some reason, that saying's just stuck with me forever. I always have all sorts of different types of botanicals when I travel to shows and I support a lot of people that sell a lot of different uh, unique botanicals such as leaves and twigs and, and seed pods and stuff. And I use them in my aquariums, but you've also seen how I've used them in my different enclosures. And because that trench is so brightly colored, I don't want to have anything brightly colored to distract in the enclosure. And you guys know I like to make every enclosure a little bit different. So I got some ideas there. And for the substrate mix, I'll be using the same style of mix that I used to make the background, same mix that I used for the OBT enclosure. It's going to be basically kind of equal parts of a coconut coir and some nice gravel from my driveway. <laughs> so, got a lot of sand content. Let's get this one rolling. So in her, in her existing terrarium, she tends to hide. She has a burrow that she kind of comes up and goes around down behind. She doesn't use the skull. And as I mentioned, I don't want to use the skull again, not in this type of an environment. But I have this nice piece of cork round repurposed from another enclosure build. And uh, this is the type of animal that lives in a, you know, I'll put a link up to the corner that's more of a, a general video about the species, like a species profile. But uh, this species inhabits this, uh, an island north of Venezuela, and it's pretty much a desert-type scrub-type habitat. Hence why I wanted to have that type of a background with the, the crumbly earth and clay and stone-type mixture. And this animal would probably dig a little burrow that would be below a... Below a uh, a shrub or something like that or under a rug or a rotten log or something like that and it would basically that's where it would pretty much spend its entire day because you're talking an animal that lives right at the aquarium so it's going to get really really hot by day and then cool down at night and it would emerge from its burrow and wait for food to pass by so i'm liking the idea of using this nice little piece of cork I'm not sure exactly how i want to position it yet but i do have lots of other bark if this one doesn't work out and i like the idea of using some of these type of things just to give it kind of architectural interest but then because this species is such a fantastic webber this will give it a lot of structure to attach webs to because if, even if i were to just run and touch this it's almost like a flower bud it's very it's it's not sharp but it would catch absolutely anything so and i've got these in a myriad of sizes so i think we can do anything we want with this sort of stuff and right, we're going to see what we can do so let's put it on time lapse and see what we can make up
so here's our finished enclosure. You guys know I like to make them all different from each other. A little bit more unique. Lots of standing points for the webbing. These ones that stick up a little bit will go down with a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna have to get the exacto knife here. I noticed I forgot to do this and clean off the silicone and the, and the little bit of substrate and stuff off there first. But otherwise, I think this one's good to go. A little bit of leaf litter, nice deep substrate, and a hide that goes all the way to the back that is half filled already with substrate so she can dig at her leisure. But I think it looks absolutely awesome. So let's go get her and move her into her beautiful new home. So I've gone and cleaned that all up. The other advantage of doing that is these holes are built into the screen and the screen goes on top and then there's the little channels and that is for running different electrical things. So if you had an animal that required a, a heating element, a pad or something that you had to require inside the enclosure, they give you these little slots for doing so. But each one of these slots also becomes an escape route for a cricket, which is something that drives my wife absolutely crazy. So taking that extra couple of minutes to seal these holes off means aces for me at home. Give my creation five. is planned and we're just gonna let her settle in there she shows shows off her colors against all that dark sandy type substrate I think she'll be very happy in this enclosure and as always they're fun to make well it's been a couple hours she's adapted really really well you saw, maybe you might have saw it some of the video, but during the transfer and getting her settled in, she did throw a lot of urticating hair. So she's got a little bit of a bald patch there now, but she's already started. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, there's already some, uh, some webbing that she's already started doing. There was some webbing to the front door. So see some at the back there. So overall, I think she's just gonna love it. I like to just leave them alone let them settle in, let them find uh, their enclosure to their liking, find the spot they want to be, and we'll see you next time. So, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, little enclosure redo, I guess you can call it, rehousing. Until next time, my friends, take care.